So today we're going to be having a look at the Rampage 3 Formula Motherboard. This is from ASUS's Republic of Gamers line, but you can tell from the suffix formula that it's actually a value member of their Republic of Gamers line, which may seem like a little, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it is. So the Rampage 3 Extreme is the fully featured board, and the Rampage 3 Formula is kind of like a little brother. So this is a Core i7 motherboard. That means it has support for all the latest LGA 1366 CPUs. That means you've got support for six cores, quad cores, and that's pretty much all you have on 1366 because it is an enthusiast platform. Core i7 Extreme, Core i7, you've got support for SLI as well as HDI Crossfire X. So let's have a look at the box itself. You can see a handy little window where you've got three PCI Express 16X slots, but we'll talk more about the board in a minute. Let's talk about a couple of the key features. So you've got ROG Connect, which is a USB interface for plugging in an, a different computer to actually uh, control BIOS options on this particular board. You've got Game First Technology, which is a LAN feature that it has in order to give you the, the speed you need to pwn. Awesome, I love it. As well as to uh, give your games priority access to any LAN functions. You've got BIOS Flashback, so you have two BIOS ROMs, which you can actually choose which one you want to boot from, as well as Supreme FX X52 built in, so that's a creative uh, solution for your onboard sound. Extreme Engine Digi Plus is a power Powerful combination of analog and digital design elements, as well as an included copy of Kaspersky Antivirus. On the back, in typical ROG fashion, it has exactly the same stuff. Except for, uh, oh, it also mentions 3-way SLI and Crossfire X. So that's, uh, that's a good thing, I suppose. It has one additional feature listed on the back that is not already listed on the front. So let's have a look at the accessory package which as you might expect with an ROG board is quite complete. You've got a three-way SLI bridge. You have an IO shield with their uh, spongy backing on it. You also have some zip ties for cable management. You have a crossfire bridge, a nice long flexible SLI bridge. You've got your Q connectors for easy plugging in of the front USB as well as the front panel connectors. A user's guide including Da, 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 a Republic of Gamers sticker as well as a support DVD which you should throw away and download the latest from the ASUS website. You have an optional fan as well as an installation guide for it so that's only if you're using water cooling or a passive or very low airflow cooler. You've got an eSATA bracket as well as USB 2.0. There's your cable for ROG Connect which is a standard USB A to A male to male cable. Then you've got six SATA 2 cables Two SATA 3 cables, please note that those are identical other than the color. There is no physical difference between a SATA 2 cable and a SATA 3 cable in terms of data transmission. I mean, I guess if you had a really terrible quality SATA 2 cable, it might not work at SATA 3 speeds, but I mean, I really find that quite, quite far-fetched indeed. All right, so let's get the motherboard out itself and have a look at it. As always, ASUS has just nailed the aesthetic on this particular board. Their Republic of Gamers boards have really been outstanding lately in that regard. So we've got a black PCB with black uh, nickel plated as well as red accents. It looks just phenomenal. So let's have a look at the overall layout. Cameraman's very interested in the PWM cooling here. So you can see that that is connected via a couple of different heat pipes. So the top one over here is connected via heat pipe to the bottom one. So you can see those two are sharing their load a little bit. And then you have a heat pipe connecting the, uh, the left PWM cooler to the Northbridge cooler down to, oh, that's a separate heat pipe itself. No, no, it's not. That's the same heat pipe. It's flattened out and then it curves up and that connects the South Bridge as well. So let's look at the overall board layout. We'll start with the CPU socket. So cameraman, if you can come direct your attention over here. That is an LGA 1366 socket. I already mentioned the CPU support, but I will say it again, Core i7 as well as Core i7 Extreme. You've got your eight pin power connector with the optional four pin a cover placed on it by default up here in the top left corner in its ideal location. You've got your six RAM slots supporting dual dual channel. You're supporting uh, dual sets of triple channel DDR3 memory with the quick install memory dim slot. So you can see that there are only clips on the one side. The other side has no clips. So you're meant to insert the module this way and then clip it down on the one side. Your 24 pin connector is in its ideal location along the right hand edge of the board. And you've also got start, reset, 
and all of your uh, voltage measurement options along the top right hand side of the board as well in very very conveniently located fashion so down here we have the go button we have oh, Q, Q reset up here I had actually missed that button and then moving down the board oh cameraman still looking at all the buttons Oh, he's waiting for it to focus. I see what he's doing now. Okay, so let's move down and have a look at the SATA options. So we've got six SATA 2 ports. Remember, Intel still does not have support natively for SATA 3 on their chipset. So it's actually a Marvel chipset right there that is running the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second port. So you do have two of those. Moving down the board, we have a BIOS reset switch right here, although that's far less conveniently located than the one that I already saw on the back panel. Here's your front panel connectors as well as as you another fan connector you've got your dual BIOS chips right there so it's actually got two physical chips this is not some cheap hack two physical BIOS chips that you can switch in between you've got your front USB ports here as well as some more of them over here I'm not sure which of these are USB and which are not to be perfectly honest all right we've got two more fan connectors and I'm gonna do a quick count of the fan connectors before we're done here firewire port and then let's look at the PCI Express layout so uh, yeah, there's the X52 Supreme FX. Cameraman's making his way to the PCI Express slots. We start with a PCIe 1X slot up at the top here, and then we have a PCIe 16X slot. Now please note there is an absence of a slot here. The assumption is that if you're buying a Republic of Gamers board, and this is a good assumption, that you're probably using a dual slot graphics card, which you should be. So you don't need a slot here, basically. All right, then we've got another PCI Express 16X slot, a PCIe 1X, 16X, and a PCI slot. So if you're running dual card, SLI or Crossfire, you're going to use these two, which means you're going to cover this one, your blank, you're going to cover this one in a PCI slot. That will leave you with two PCIe 1X slots that will remain usable. We've got an auxiliary Molex power connector here. So if you are running up to three cards, and then you'll cover almost all of your slots except this guy, then you should plug that in because otherwise you're drawing just too much power out of the 24 pin connector. Now let's have a look at the back of the board on the IO shield. We've got a purple PS2 port, so that's going to be keyboard only. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, is that one of those combo ports? No, it's not. So we have six USB 2.0 ports. We have a powered eSATA port as well as a regular eSATA port. And then we have a clear CMO switch, optical audio out, the uh, ROG Connect button, USB 3.0 support, gigabit LAN, and those look like gold-plated 7.1 audio connectors. And before we're done, I did promise a count of the four-pin fan connectors. So we have one, two up here by the CPU socket. And we have another one over here on the top right of the board. We have another one down here by the north bridge. So that is, I don't know, four. And then down at the bottom of the board, we find another five, six, seven total so that means that you can actually control all of those fans via the BIOS and uh, hold on one two three four five six seven eight eight there's one more over here by the 24 pin connector so you can actually control eight fans via the BIOS software and uh, you can optimize them for performance or for silence that's a pretty cool feature and they all support PWM there's the back of the board in case you care thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Rampage 3 formula don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips